Hello, welcome to Chandler and Focus. I'm Councilmember Jeff Winnegar. Today our topic of discussion is social media and its use in personal and government business. Um, it's appropriate today because today there was a large article on the front of the Arizona Republic discussing government officials using social media. So we'll get to more of that later. But today my guests are Tyler Hurst and Glennis Legrand. Welcome to both of you. It's Thank you. Thank you. you. Uh, let's start by uh, virtue of introduction. If you could tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. Glennis? Okay. Hi, I'm Glennis Legrand and I own the Urban Tea Loft located here in downtown Chandler, Arizona. Basically, we are a restaurant, bar, tea room, and tea retailer. So we sell loose teas and we educate people on what it means to be a loose tea drinker and the health benefits of that. And we have private rooms that you can um, have meetings in and parties as well. Excellent. Shop local. That's what we like. Uh, Tyler? Uh, my name is Tyler Hurst and I have drank tea from Urban Tea Loft many of times. Uh, I am a local writer and event producer. I, uh, I work at Gangplank and help, uh, help local businesses tell their stories online and help uh, local businesses learn how to do better online. Excellent. Well, there's been a lot of talk about Gangplank. So for those uh, uh, people who don't understand and don't know, tell us a little bit about Gangplank and its hours and its location. Okay. Uh, Gangplank is located at 250 South Arizona Avenue, uh, right across the street uh, from the building that we are in, just about. Uh, it is open pretty much every weekday from eight to six. It's usually open a little earlier and a little later than that, but we can't guarantee that because there's a bunch of people that have families to go home to. It's open most weekends as well, uh, almost always by appointment. If you wanna email uh, Katie at gangplankhq.com, you can always arrange to have it open for you. Uh, Gangplank is a collaborative workspace that provides resources and space for creative professionals or creative companies to uh, do what's called help build a new economy. Uh, we believe that collaboration is better than competition and that by putting a bunch of smart, like-minded, dedicated, passionate people in the same room, cool things can happen. Which uh, cool things do happen there. Yes. But a lot of people sometimes are intimidated thinking that you have to be a techie or something to go in there. But Anybody can go on there, just plop your computer down, jump on the internet, and start working. Yes, uh, the only thing, the, really the only thing that's required is you. Uh, it would be very helpful to have a laptop. We do not have computers to loan out, but if you have a laptop, you can come in and, and hop on the very, very fast Wi-Fi, uh, courtesy of, of, uh, of Cox down here. We have some seriously fast Wi-Fi, which is great. Uh, but you know, you don't have to be a techie. Just, just last week, or actually a couple days ago, we had a storytellers meetup, which is all about writers. And most writers aren't usually, you know, they're not programmers, they're not coders, they're not anything else, and they're just there to, to learn how to do stuff. So um, all you have to do is be able to drive down here and walk in the door and say hi. As well as some great kids programs, Lego yes. League, things like that. So that's yes. great. Well, let's talk about social media. How significant is the use of social media these days, and can you quantify it? Um, Actually, I'm gonna pass this off to Glennis because as a small business owner, you do an excellent job using social media to both to, to talk about uh, your events, to connect mm -hmm. with customers. I know that both your New Year's Eve event and your Valentine's Day event, um, I saw on Facebook and that's why I signed up to go to them. Yep, thank uh, you so much for supporting yeah. us, yeah. Tyler, and coming down to that. You know, it's very, very significant. Basically, what social media allows a business owner to do is measure customer interest, right. customer engagement, and even customer satisfaction. Um, you know, we find out so much from our customers just by communicating with them on Facebook and on Twitter. And we're also on LinkedIn. So it gives our customers another way to kind of see us um, as people and to view our business. So, um, you know, I can diffuse a customer situation just by communicating with them and direct messaging them on Twitter. I can um, engage the customer by asking them questions on Facebook. And I can basically um, kind of determine what their, their interest is. For example, we were considering a move to Scottsdale. And so I just posted out there, well, not a move, not a move, another location. Okay. Expansion. Potentially okay. An expansion, an, another location in, in Scottsdale. <laughs> and I just threw that out there and got so much customer interaction back telling me it's okay for a second location, don't move there. Right. Or, you know, Scottsdale already has everything. Why, you know, why right. go there? We want you here, you focusing know, just, yeah, 100%. focusing just on, on Chandler. So, you know, it's, it's great to engage your customers that way. But I think the key word you said there is engage mm -hmm. because so many businesses and even people, mm -hmm. uh, uh, politicians, whatever, they just talk at people. Right. They, they don't engage and allow that conversation. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's, a, it's a very cheap broadcasting mechanism for, for that type of thing. Um, the return on investment when you do that, when you do that is, is very, very poor. 
Uh, when you are using social media, you know, using either, and, we're, and by social media in these terms, we're usually talking about Facebook and Twitter because mm -hmm. they're the two most popular, mo most popular mediums out there. Um, it's like going into a crowded networking party or crowded cocktail party and just start talking about yourself. No one's going to like you. Yeah. Um, it's much more important to, to have conversations with people back and forth in order to have any sort of good uh, return on the time that you're going to spend there. And usually the more time you spend on it, the more you're going to get back from it. And the more real and authentic mm -hmm. you're being. I mean, mm -hmm. I use the comparison uh, in my restaurants. I, I waited tables for years and years, mm -hmm. and I hated when I had to go up to a table and read a script. How would you like yeah. to try our <laughs> super duper delicious appetizer today and people just know you're not being mm -hmm. real right. and so we empower our uh, servers and our employees just to be themselves mm -hmm. within reason you yeah. know unless they're just a brash person but yeah. to be themselves and we find that people really like that and mm -hmm. and to me it tr that transforms to social media as well where you are just going to be yourself and not just be this kind of fake persona yeah and I think um, especially businesses on businesses online is is People buy from people. They don't always buy from businesses. I mean, as great as as, as, as your restaurants are, and I, I love the pizza, and as great as tea is, mm -hmm. you're not the only purveyors of that That's anywhere. Right. And I could probably find it cheaper somewhere else. Mm -hmm. um, but we buy from people that we know. And so the more that we interact with, with, with business owners or employees online, the more likely it is we're going to invite our friends, invite our family when they come down. Mm -hmm. um, it's a It's a great way to have a relationship with people without having to sit down next to them all the time. Well, we've been talking about uh, Facebook, and so uh, we'll, we'll get into Twitter maybe a little bit, but let's go ahead for people who don't really know how to use Facebook, and uh, you know, you saw the media recently, and you know it's old school when people are calling it, I was on the Facebook, um, <laughs> or the Twitter, uh, but let's go ahead and show people how to sign up through this little video, uh, how to sign up and, and navigate around Facebook. We'll be back in just a minute. Facebook is the world's largest social network with over 500 million members. If you know someone, if you've worked with someone, if you grew up with someone, if you played sports with someone, or if you pass someone on the street, they probably have an account on here. Let's log in. This is the main Facebook page and you will it's called a feed, which is where you'll find all the updates from everyone that you follow. There's two different options to have here. You can have the most recent ones or the top ones, and the top ones are the ones that more people have commented on and talked about. The recent ones, obviously, are the things that are most recently happening. A status update tells everyone what you're doing. It's as simple as clicking and typing and then pressing enter. Really, there's no trick to it besides that. One of the greatest ways you can use Facebook is to share information with the people that are closest to you that they may not already have access to. You can type in a link, add some commentary, and then also pick the picture that you want. Here I am sharing a link to Amanda Vega's blog, which is written by Amanda Vega about herself, her friends, and her industry. Um, you notice that I can pick the pictures and it shows me a preview of what I'm showing everyone so I don't give someone a weird link that I don't know about. Facebook also has its own messages program. If you click on the left hand side you can see these private messages sent to you by people that uh, found you on Facebook. You don't have to be friends with them for, to receive and send messages. Here we have events that you've already RSVP'd to. These are the ones that I've said yes to and it'll let me change that if I want. Suggested friends are on the right hand side. If you click you can make friends with people. If I click on the friends tab it'll show friend requests that I have or recommended friends from the other side. It does this by seeing which friends are friends of your friends and then suggesting them back to you. Here I can click confirm or not now for people. Tagging pictures within Facebook photo albums is one of the coolest ways to let other Facebook users know that you have pictures of them. Here I am tagging two of Katie Charlin's pics and then I'm going to add a caption here to kind of describe what's going on in these three pictures. You notice the picture on the left does not have a tag yet? Well, we can fix that. I click on the picture. I look at that man. It looks a lot like a guy but I know by the name of Stephen Groves. So I go up here, click on his face, start typing his name, select his name, and then click Done Tagging. Now Katie and Stephen will be notified that they have pictures. 
While I'm sure nothing that you do is embarrassing to you, your job, or your parents, it's important to make sure that no one on Facebook can publish things on your wall or publish photos of you in compromising positions. Use the privacy settings to make sure that doesn't happen. Or if it does, at least you'll know about it. If you haven't seen the movie Social Network or listened to the soundtrack by Trent Reznor, I highly recommend it. While the movie isn't exactly true, it definitely touches on some true points, and it's based on a true story, and it's pretty entertaining. Also, the soundtrack is pretty good to listen to. Now, I think that's just about it, so I'm going to sign off here in a little bit and let you guys go along. See the movie. See Facebook. Just kidding. Here's how to make Facebook pages instead of profiles for your clients. Go to facebook.com slash pages, and then choose the one that's most appropriate. Most of the time you'll be making pages for local businesses, but sometimes you can make it for a brand or a star. Once you've named the page, it's very important you get up an avatar that represents the company. Here I'm looking for the logo from the company, which I pulled from some existing um, files, and I'm using that as my avatar. Very simple, very clean, and it looks exactly like the company should. This is what it looks like. After you create that, you can suggest the page to your friends. Now this is your friends on your profile, so be careful with this. I recommend importing contacts by downloading your client's CSV file. Here's some, also some other options. It's also a great idea to fill in a tagline, a description, or a mission statement up here in the top left hand corner. I tend to change these about once a week to about once a month, just to make sure that people understand what the business is about. You can be funny, you can be helpful, but you can't put links or anything, so just make it something clever and quick and informative. The info section is particularly important for retail businesses. If people can't find you, don't know when you're open, and have no way to contact you, they probably won't come in and buy anything. Make sure you fill all these out completely with information that is verified and true. Setting usernames is the same as it is on profiles as for pages is go to facebook.com slash username. If you have more than 25 friends or 25 fans, you'll be allowed to create a custom username. You cannot change this. And that's all she wrote. Welcome back. So you just saw how easy it is through Tyler uh, narrating that, how to uh, sign up for Facebook, navigate around it. So uh, let's go ahead and talk to Glennis a little bit about how you use this in every uh, day life in your business. So you own Urban Tea Loft, um, and we talked a little bit about uh, what you serve. I, I know there's a lot of different events in, in downtown, and sometimes we get these big pushes down there, but um, if somebody wanted to sign up for your Facebook account, I mean, how do they go about following you, and, and how often do you interact? Like, how many times do you post on Facebook and throughout a day? You know, that's a good question. I try not to overwhelm the people who are following us on Facebook and Twitter with a lot of tweets or um, you know a lot of posts on Facebook. There are other business owners that probably tweet in Facebook two to three times a day. Um, I went to a seminar once and they said about two to three times a day is kind of what you want to do. I don't do it to that extent and th the reason that I don't is because I'm a busy business owner and when people are communicating with the Urban Tea Loft on Twitter and Facebook, they are communicating directly with me. I don't delegate that responsibility. And so that's why when customers walk to the do through the door, I can give them their Twitter handle because right. I recognize their <laughs> face. And so I'm like, oh, you're a great tailor on, on, you know, on Twitter right. or whatever. So I Pete's like- He's got a having plug, he's got to like that. <laughs> <laughs> so I like having that personal interaction because I am directly talking to the customer. So I might do it once a day. If I'm doing it once a day for me, that's pretty, that's right. kind of good, you right. know? Um, so that's and how often I do it. people follow hundreds of people. So if you're doing it constantly, people, sometimes it's, it's a little bit of overload, but sometimes right. you post once a day and you can go back and you can, people are commenting and then you can jump in on the comments. That's or, right, and I can respond to that. You know, I don't want it to be so overwhelming that, um, my voice isn't authentic, right. or I can't get back to people in a timely manner. But it's good that you're actually doing it. And I know sometimes with the time, people can't, uh, business owners can't always do it, but if you farm it out too far along to somebody who just doesn't understand your business, right. then it, it, yeah, it's not authentic. Um, what prompted you to start using it? Was there some kind of a catalyst or a genesis that 
you started doing it? There sure was. It was a big catalyst, and his name is Jason Nolf. He's one of our customers, and he literally hunted me down. I had <laughs> not met him, but he had come into the loft several times, and he, um, he made it a point to come back like four times until he could personally meet with me to talk to me about Twitter. Okay. Um, and you know, it was, it was so eye-opening to me. He spent so much time with me with, without knowing us, but he thought our business was important enough to sit down with me, to help me set up an account, to tell me, you know, kind of the ins and out of tweeting and right. that type of thing. I, we had a Facebook page, but we didn't have a Twitter account. And um, you know, I, I just totally thank him for that because we, by now, we would have kind of caught right. a clue, but um, we didn't have a clue before Jason came in and, and said, you need to do this, and these are the reasons you need to do this. You know, and one of the things we realized, Jeff, is that people want to be communicated to in different ways, and that's what social media allows us to do. It allows us to reach people who just want that quick 140 characters or less. Right. It allows us to reach people who want interaction and for you to comment back and forth with them. Um, and it also allows you to reach people. One of the um, forms of social media we use that we haven't talked about is Boom Text. They're a local company. Okay. And you can um, send like real quick text messages to your customers. And so if you're having a special within like the next two hours, that's immediate. It's going to their cell phone. Which is great for slow for, for a restaurant. Owner. That's great yes. for slower times of the day to that's do that. Right. I mean, if you're busy at noon all the time, but you can say, hey, I'm going to push this out to get some business going between two and four. Right. That sounds like an incredible tool. Yes, absolutely. So you use that, you use Twitter, you use Facebook. Yes, we use LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Um, again, Boomtax. We also use um, Groupon. Um, to me, Groupon is a form of social media. Yeah, absolutely. They have just you know hundreds of thousands of people signed up, and although it's a it's a coupon type mm -hmm. deal. Um, they retweet your coupon deals through forms of social media. They allow you to do that as well. And it just reaches a lot of people without a lot of effort. Right. And that's, that's one of the things for business owners who aren't you know, on Twitter or using any type of form, forms of social media. It's free and it's quick and you don't have to devote your life you know, to doing it. Right, yeah. excellent. Well, what kind of, have you gotten feedback from different customers? I'm assuming everybody really likes that you've done this and have you seen uh, an increase in sales? Or I mean, everybody talks about the ROI, but mm -hmm. there's not a lot of return on investment. You've got to realize that you're communicating with the customers. You can't always measure that, but That's right. y you're, you're confident it's been really effective for you? It's been really effective for us in terms of relationship building. Um, and you know, that's one of the things that social media really allows you to do. As a business owner, as, as Tyler said, people are buying from people that they know and that they have relationships with. And so you can truly, although it's technology, build relationships with your customers. Right. Um, in terms of ROI, that's been a big um, return on investment for me. Now, our sales have gone up, but they've gone up because of Groupon. They've gone up because of word of mouth. You're taking and that a type of thing. shotgun approach. You're not just taking just just doing one thing. Yes. You, you have a, a bunch of different things in the works that is absolutely your it's line. nothing is one and done. Right. You know, you you've got to communicate to your customers in the form and method that they want to be communicated to, and that's what social media allows you to do. Excellent, excellent. Well, Tyler, nowadays you see people downloading applications on their <coughs> on their phones, their yep. iPhone or their yep. Droid. Uh, so. How easy is it to use social media on the go? Uh, if you can text, which I would assume most people can, can SMS or text. Um, I, I just taught my parents about a year ago and they are excited about it. They don't use it quite as much as, as I do. But the, uh, with iPhones, Android, uh, Windows 7, any, phone, any, any smartphone that you have, even Blackberry, um, it's just as if you can use a computer, you can use a mobile app. Most of the time, the mobile apps in your phone are going to be much simpler because they're designed to use with one finger, uh, designed to use very, very quickly. But just about every, I mean, I have a Twitter app, I have a Facebook app. Uh, we didn't talk about location-based services apps like GoWalla, Foursquare, or Facebook oh, Places, yeah. which allow you to check in to different places, which are what I always do when I go, uh, when I go to your place. Um, those are very, very quickly, quickly used, and most of them are free. Uh, right. I don't think I've ever had to pay, I don't think I've ever had a social media app that's cost any money, and if it did, it was 99 cents. Mm -hmm. So they, um, they're, they're much, much more simplified. Not, they're not basic versions of the app, they're just easier and quicker to use. 
um, and they uh, and they allow you to do quite a bit more because a lot of people don't have time to sit down at a computer and and tweet and use and go on Facebook and all that stuff. Uh, with your phone, you can take 45 seconds and do almost as much as you could anywhere else. Right. Mm -hmm. Or take a picture of you're something. You're sitting in a, when you're sitting in a waiting room when you're mm -hmm. doing it, when you doing anything else. Yeah, you can kind of track track different things. So. Well, we're going to talk about what advice you have for businesses uh, who are on social media. But right now, we're going to cut to another video. Last night, Gary Vaynerchuk was in town. Gary's kind of a, an expert on social media. He has a, a, a book a couple years ago called Crush It, which was a bestseller. He has a new book called The Thank You Economy uh, on social media, which is already number two uh, on the New York Times bestseller list. So Tyler interviewed him. Let's hear a little bit about what he had to say about social media. If you're a business person in 2011 and looking to do business and you're not part of the social media world, you're grossly negligent. I'm Gary Vaynerchuk and I root for the New York Jets. But also, I guess I write books. I just have a new book up here in Arizona, a new book signing uh, called The Thank You Economy. Um, I do a daily wine show called Daily Grape. That's weird to say because I've been doing one for five years called Wine Library TV. But I just innovated and created something new called Daily Grape that's very mobile friendly. Download it. iPhone users, Android coming, sorry. Blackberry, I'll get to you. Um, and I also uh, own a wine company called The Wine Library, winelibrary.com, and a social media consulting agency called VaynerMedia with my brother AJ. We do the social media strategy and community management for companies like Campbell's and PepsiCo and Green Mountain Coffee and a lot of other large brands. Average Joe, I highly recommend you continue to put your head in the sand like an ostrich and, and be that guy that in 1999 said the internet was a fad and, and to be that guy that didn't want to believe that Henry Ford created a machine that was better than the horse. You continue to put your head in the sand and not think the world's evolving. If you're Average Joe and you're living your life, I have no issues whatsoever with you not using social media. This is how we can win. I'm a small business. I built my family's liquor store business from a $3 million business to a $60 million business on innovation and customer service. That is what social media is. It's innovation. It's changing the way people consume. You know, people are not reading your bus stop ad, you know, or your billboard ad anymore. They're looking down at their phone. If you're not building mobile apps, you're not thinking about it. At least, at lowest common denominator, please use search.twitter.com and search for terms in your general area. And you would do that if you're a pizza shop by typing in pizza space near, N-E-A-R, colon, your zip code. It's happening. It's happening. And you need to do it right now. All right. Well, that was a uh, great video. That was uh, helpful. So, Tyler, what advice do you have for businesses who are considering using social media? What uh, are the pros and the cons? Do everything Gary Vee just said. Um, <laughs> the, the greatest thing about, about businesses using social media is it makes them more social. Okay, no, sorry, it doesn't make it. It allows them to show off how social they are. Many businesses you see, and this is unfortunate for, and this has happened in downtown Chandler, not to your place, but mm -hmm. it's happened a couple other times, mm -hmm. uh, where you will go in, you will talk to a hostess or, or a waitress or, or a host or a, a waiter, and they will kind of blow you off for whatever reason. They're busy or whatnot. Um, social media will not make that better. Social media actually will make that worse. What, what social media does a very good job of is magnifying who you are and, who you're and, and what your business does. Um, so pros, if, you're, if you have a great product and, you're, and, you're, and your employees generally like what they do and they like the customers, you're gonna go very, very far. However, cons, if you have a product that isn't that great, if you have employees that are treated poorly or don't like what they're doing, um, that's gonna come back to bite you. Uh, hopefully that'll, hopefully that'll, that'll force the manager or the, or the owner of the business to, to make a better product. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the absolute best things. It's a weird, it's a con at first, but it could be a pro, is you can find out based on customer reactions and whatnot exactly what is wrong with your business without yeah. having to wait six months before everyone's gone. It's an um, instant, instant customer yeah, card. Yeah, you, uh, you can use, uh, on Twitter, you can use location-based based searches uh, to find out exactly what people are saying about your business mm -hmm. or, or, or your industry um, around your area. It's kind of, it's very, very cool. I think um, uh, Gary Vee talked about that in the video, or if not, he talked about afterwards right. with us about doing that. And that's a great way of, of, of checking different things. Uh, now, if you're not, if you're not solely a, um, a food provider, if you're more of a retail store, or if you're, or if you're like a, a bigger company like Intel, mm -hmm. um, you can really uh, put, a, put a, a, a personable face on companies because I know a lot of bigger companies that you know who do you talk to at a big company you yeah. don't know they're they're just a right. brand you have yeah. no idea 
um, it can enable you to have some better relationships with uh, with some of the people that are working there. Absolutely. Well, for both of you, uh, we're winding the show down a little bit. What what about for individual users? Do you have recommendations for people, who, I guess, who are consuming content as well as putting some things out there about their lives? Uh, I'll, I am a uh, probably the worst example ever for this because I post everything. You don't have much of an edit button in your no, head. No, well, I, I do have an edit button, which is even scarier. Um, it just depends on, on, on what your personality is. I am an extrovert. I talk a lot. That's just who I am, and you can tell by my Twitter stream that that's what it is. But if you looked at, at my Twitter and Facebook stream, 70%, and I've, you can track this with different tools, 70% of what I say is replies to people. So most of the time, I'm really using it as a big chat room, which annoys some people, but that's just how I use it, and I, I like it. Um, Enables me for, uh, for, for work type stuff. You can work out problems. You can get uh, questions answered very, very quickly. Hey, I need to know where blank is, or I need to know how to do this. You can usually find an answer for that. Um, you can also, uh, when I travel, I have built-in friends. I say, hey, I'm in New York. Who wants to hang out? And the, you know, the, the 10 people that I've conversed with on Twitter, right. all of a sudden I have someone to go out to coffee with, which is really, really fantastic. Very cool. Um, it, the bad stuff, obviously, you can sh share your opinion and get hammered for it, uh, which is you know pretty much your own fault. But that's but that's a it's a cool way to get stuff out there. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also uh, writing a, a blog about uh, about planning a wedding, which I've never seen before from start to finish of of, of planning a wedding. So that should be very very interesting to that's that is check really out cool. in a couple months. So. Just listen to what she says. That's <laughs> the main advice I'll give you, Gladys. How about you? I mean, do you consume uh, content on Facebook? I mean, as a user as well. Yes, I do. I have a personal Facebook account. I have a personal LinkedIn account, and I have a personal Twitter account as well. I don't use that one quite as much, right. you know, just due to due to time constraints. You have a personal, I but know. oh yeah, I have a I have a personal Twitter account. <laughs> We're not really friends. <laughs> but I don't <sighs> use it as much. Um, but I will start to because you know, obviously, I have a, a voice as a right. you know as a non business owner as well. And sometimes as a citizen, you know, different things you want to comment, not necessarily as your business, that's but right. personally as, as this person yes, over that's here. That's right. Oh, I have to be careful, though, because a lot of people see me as my business. I understand you know exactly what, I mean? what you're saying. So maybe I can post a picture of Snoopy or something <laughs> and communicate that way. Okay. Well, let me mention also that the city of Chandler is actively using Facebook and Twitter mm -hmm. to communicate with our residents. We post events uh, and information as well as links to some of our shows. Uh, for anyone interested, the Facebook account is... Chandler, Arizona, and Twitter is at City of Chandler. You can also follow my comments on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, just look up Jeff Winnegar. I think we're going to show those links at the end of the show. Well, we just have just like one minute remaining, so anything else you would just like to kind of get out there before we sign off? You know, as a business owner, one of the things that um, some of these forms of social media allows you to do is it allows you to choose your customer. Like Tyler was talking about Twitter searches that you can do. Right. Um, basically, I go on and I look at people who are talking about tea in tea. Arizona or tea in Chandler or restaurants in Chandler. Amazing. And so I know they have an interest right. there. And so I will start to follow them to see kind of what com what types of comments they've made right. about you know the product and um, the, the product and the services that I offer. And so that's that's a major plus for business owners. That's excellent. That's what Gary Vee did to mm -hmm. build up his wine mm -hmm. uh, library. Uh, my advice for using social media for anyone, for business or individuals, is uh, remember that social media, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, are just tools to build relationships. A lot of people in Arizona have done a fantastic job of that, of they do the small talk online and mm -hmm. they meet at night or they meet on weekends. Um, when, you, when, when I say Twitter friends, I really mean my real life friends. Mm -hmm. And uh, I urge people to uh, don't always sit at your computer. You know, make sure and get out and meet those people that you talk to because you can find some really good friends that way. I mean, mm -hmm. the three of us would not have met except for That's um, true. That's absolutely right. except for Twitter or mm -hmm. and or Facebook. So it's kind of a cool way to, to, to do that. Well, it was a pleasure having you both Thank on the you. show. Thank you I for really appreciate us. you bet. I think this is uh, changing the way we kind of do these shows and, and Chandler stuff and bringing on some new topics. Uh, thank you for everyone watching uh, Chandler in Focus. Check out this article today in the paper. I guess you'll have to archive it. I'll put a link up uh, on my Twitter and Facebook feed uh, talking about elected officials and how maybe we shouldn't be using this as much. But I will keep communicating until a court order tells me not to. <laughs> so uh, I don't think communicating with constituents is anything bad. So thank you for joining us. In the meantime, stay safe and stay involved.